was a reign of terror taking place in Mississippi. It was the fear that the Supreme Court case that had been handed down, Brown versus Board of Education, uh, was going to impact uh, the everyday life of the Southern way. And as a result of that, the white community took up arms. Segregation is an institution of the South that we do not intend to see disturbed. The mission of the White Citizens Council was very clear maintain power and control over blacks. This meant disenfranchising eligible black voters by any means necessary. The White Citizens Council may have been called the Uptown Klan, but their tactics were as violent and dehumanizing as their white supremacist counterpart, the Ku Klux Klan. After the events in Selma and the passage of the Voting Rights Act, literacy tests and other discrimination tactics were made illegal. Before the Voting Rights Act, in 1961, only about 1% 1 of eligible African American voters were registered in Dallas County, Alabama. After the Voting Rights Act, 67% of African Americans had registered to vote in Dallas County. After World War II, many Americans began to question the state of U.S. democracy. How could a nation that fought for freedom and human rights abroad come home and deny suffrage based on race? The modern civil rights movement began in the 1940s with those questions in mind. After years of sacrifice, bloodshed, and pain, the United States passed the Voting Rights Act of 1965, finally eliminating restrictions such as literacy tests and protecting the voting rights promised under the 15th Amendment to the Constitution. Now, any citizen over the age of 21 could vote. That's him, that's him. Let's go, get upside, get upside. I got you now, Reverend! On May 7, 1955, the Reverend George Lee was followed by another car as he drove home from a speaking engagement. Suddenly, bullets rang out and Reverend Lee was shot dead. To understand how through land or business ownership. In addition to being a pastor, George Lee enjoyed a good life as a successful local businessman. George W. Lee was an enormously courageous man. He was a Baptist minister, and apparently a very good one. We know that he ran his own print shop. And we also know he was a very brave man, obviously, because Humphreys County, where Belzoni is, uh, in 1955 had over 5,500 blacks who could register to vote. There were zero. I knew him real well. He used to come around my mom. She cooked a lot. My mom cooked a lot. And they would come by and eat. And you know, preachers love to eat. He was just quiet, very quiet. And he didn't talk or bubble or whisper hard. He talked real soft. George Lee was passing a church out from Slaughter, Mississippi. And that was during that time when Brother Lee was coming by talking about a, a good place. This place was for color. He was in the early stages of the development of the modern civil rights movement, but specifically focusing on voting rights. So he was trying to be really the first one uh, to register and vote, and um, he had been warned. 
as had others, that if you do this, there's going to be consequences. Once, when Reverend Lee and an associate, Gus Quartz, attempted to register to vote, the then county sheriff, Ike Shelton, refused to accept their poll tax payment. Reverend Lee and Quartz bravely reported this to federal authorities and subsequently were able to cast their ballots. However, this made both men targets of the White Citizens Council. Well, George Lee uh, got involved in, in voting rights in the 1950s. He was in the Delta, he was in Belzona, and he was registering people to vote. Well, the white establishment despised this. Reverend Lee was an open and the earliest proponent I know of electing a black congressman from the Delta. He saw that as our opportunity and as why voter registration was important to us. If you attempt to become a registered voter, the white people will kill you. He needed to take on the cause of voting rights. He would have lived a long time if he had avoided that. That night I was cleaning up. 